Hello everybody, Mr. Lover 55 here, and welcome to another Top 10 video! With 2018 right around the corner, we will be getting some awesome new LEGO sets. However, I thought I'd take a step back and take a look at some of the awesome sets we already got here in 2017. Before I count down all the sets on my list, I would just like to get a couple of things cleared up first. First off, this list will only consist of sets that I currently own and that I have purchased in the year of 2017. Second, these 10 sets are my personal favorites, so feel free to disagree with me and post your own top 10 favorite LEGO sets of 2017 down in the comments below. So with all that cleared up, allow me to share my top 10 favorite LEGO sets of 2017. Coming in at number 10 is set 70359, Lance vs. Lightning. So one of the things that I really like about this set is that it's pretty much a starter pack for the second year of Nexo Knights. This set includes two minifigures, a Grimrock, two Gravelers, Lance's Skeleton Horse, and a small structure that houses a forbidden power. For a $25 set, you get quite a lot of play value as well as display value out of just this one set. And for such a small price, you get some pretty decent items, such as the new Gargoyle and Grimrock figure, as well as the forbidden power of Malicious Melting. And that is why this set is number 10 on my list. Taking the number 9 spot on this list is set 70608, Master Falls. Now, I don't exactly like the set so much for its play value, although it does have some, mainly for its display value. The design of this set really reminds me of the old Adventures theme that LEGO used to make. You also get some nice figures in this set, such as Wu and Garmadon. I really do love all the detail in this set, such as the 1x2 transparent blue plates to represent flowing water, as well as all of the foliage scattered throughout the set, even the tan micro figures embedded in the walls of the back of the set. And the ability to pose minifigures on the bridge just increases the display value of this set. And for these reasons, that is why this set is number 9 on my list. The number 8 spot on my list goes to set 70350, The Three Brothers. Now, I will say there are three main things that I really like about this set. The figures, the pieces, and the play value. The figures included in this set are Axel, Reeks, and Rug. Reeks and Rug are two exclusive figures that are exclusive to this set. However, Axel, on the other hand, is not exclusive. But this is the cheapest set that he comes in, in his 2017 uh, night suit. I believe the other sets that he comes in are the King's Castle and his uh, driller vehicle, or whatever it's called. You also get quite a lot of cool pieces in this set, such as the lightning blades, the trans pretty much all the transparent blue pyramid pieces, and of course, the purple pieces. I also do like the big dark bluish gray wheels as well. And now the play value on this set is tremendous, mainly because of one function. And how this play feature works is when you roll the third brother rumble across the floor, or pretty much I would recommend dry, ru rolling it across a carpet or something like that, when you roll him, his mouth opens and closes over and over again, which is a really cool function. And that is why the Three Brothers has taken the number 8 spot on this list. Coming in at number 7 is set 21131, The Ice Spikes. Now this is just one Minecraft set that I felt had to be on this list, because the Ice Spikes is one of my favorite biomes in Minecraft. But as for the set itself, there are a lot of cool elements included in it, such as the new enchanting table which was first introduced in this set, and so far it hasn't been introduced in any other set. Also the enchanted pickaxe, I believe this was the first set to ever include that. We also have a new redesigned Snow Golem, which is very nice to see, and it's also nice to see a fresh new take on that mob. And this is also the first set to include a baby cow. Although none of the parts to it are exclusive, it is the first time we've seen this mob in a set before. The two primary play features in this set, which are the Snow Golem transformation, as well as the rearrangement of the ice spikes, those are two functions that I really do like, and I feel like it adds a whole lot of play value 
value to the set. I like the way they did the Snow Golem transformation here in this set than what they did for the Iron Golem transformation in the Iron Golem set, but that was mainly because it's a little bit harder to do it with a larger mob. I feel like this one is a lot better because you're able to do it more quickly and it's a lot less noticeable that there's a gigantic plate flipping up and down quickly. And those are my reasons for this set being number 7 on my list. Taking the number 6 spot on this list is set 70372. Combo Nexo Powers Wave 1. Now, I'm just gonna straight up say that this will be the only type of LEGO blind bag on this list, and for a good reason. So, for those of you who don't know, I got a lot, and I mean a lot, of these packs around the first month of the year in January, around my birthday. In fact, the videos that I made on these blind bag openings were some of the, my most popular videos I've ever made. Now, when I first found out about the release of these Nexo Knights combo Nexo Power blind bags, I was really excited because it was gonna be sort of cool to see another, I guess, well not another, but it would be it was gonna be really cool to see a blind bag series that wasn't the collectible minifigure series. Although there were some Nexo powers that weren't exclusive to the blind bag series, it was really cool to see them all in set form because not all of the Nexo powers uh, included in this wave had been on an actual, an actual toy form. And not only are these Nexo powers useful for just the game, but they're also pretty useful for mocking as well. And that is why this blind bag series takes the number six spot on my list. We are now halfway through my list, and taking the number 5 spot is all 5 of the battle suits from the Nexo Knights Winter Wave. Now, the main reason all 5 of these battle suits are not on the list and not just one of them is because I like the idea of the battle suits in general. Each battle suit has something that makes that battle suit unique and different from the rest. However, in general, they're pretty much very similar. I think the battle suits are a major improvement in step up from the original Ultimate ultimate sets because one you the original ultimate sets came with only 3 nexo powers whereas each battle suit comes with 5 nexo powers in total now some of them were old powers that were from the previous year however some of them were also new powers so you did get quite a lot so if you missed out on a power from the previous year then there's a good chance that it was in one of the battle suit sets observing the 2018 sets it seems like they're going to be continuing this concept of the battle suits throughout the third year of Nexo Knights, which I am very happy about. Overall, I really like the idea of the battle suits, and they are probably my favorite $10 sets of 2017. And that is why these sets hold the number 5 spot on my list. Coming in at number 4 is set 21130, The Nether Railway. Now I really like this set because of all the creative possibilities you can come up with. The ability to rearrange the tracks and create your own railway is a feature I really do like to play around with. I will also say that a lot of the figures in this set are also really cool to get. So far, this is the cheapest Minecraft set to come with diamond leggings slash boots. This is also the cheapest set that you can get the zombie pigmen in previously it came in the nether fortress which was a uh, quite expensive set compared to this uh, and of course the magma cubes the small magma cube and the large magma cube are exclusive to the set well so far uh, the small magma cube is going to be coming out in a cheaper minecraft set that's coming out in 2018 so that won't be exclusive anymore but the large one will remain exclusive. And speaking of the large magma cube, that also has a function that I believe to be very satisfying. When you have the large magma cube jump up and down, it splits into layers just like it does in the actual game, and that is a very satisfying feature that I really did like to play around with. And that is why I have chosen this set to take the number 4 spot on my list. Coming in at number 3 is set 70611, The Water Strider. Now, the reason this set is so high on this list is not just because the design of the actual vehicle itself is really impressive, but also because of the price you pay for it. When the pictures were first released for this set, I thought this was going to be a $40 set, 
However, that ended up not being the case, and it actually was a $30 set. 494 pieces is an amazing price to part ratio for a $30 set. I pretty much love everything about this set, except for a couple things. I like all of the minifigures included in this set, except for Kai. He is probably the most common ninja that you can get in all the sets. He comes in a $10 set, uh, he's come in the recent $20 set, which is the Piranha Attack thing. Uh, $30 set, he's come in this set, and he's also come in Master Falls, and then a lot of the other bigger sets, such as Destiny's Bounty and the Temple of the Ultimate Ultimate Weapon. So, he's come in a lot of sets, and I'm disappointed they didn't put one of the other ninja, like Jay or even Cole, because they're... There are minifigures, they, I believe they only come in two sets. As for the actual build, I'm a little bit disappointed with the posability. I wish uh, it posed more at the center uh, instead of just the uh, ankles, I guess, and the knees. So I wish it posed a, posed a little bit more. And also, I felt the build was a really repetitive with the legs. Uh, and that's probably one of the reasons this is a $30 set, because you're pretty much building the same leg uh, just four times. So that was a bit annoying, and it just it was very repetitive, and that was one of the things I didn't like. Other than those few things, I pretty much like everything else about the set. And if you ever get the chance, if you're going to pick up one LEGO Ninjaga movie set, this is going to be the one. It's pretty cheap, because right now it's been out for a while, so it's most likely going to be on sale. Um, so you're getting pretty good deal. You got a decent amount of parts. The build is really good. You get a neat selection of minifigures, and I just probably, I'm just gonna say this is one of my favorite LEGO Ninjago movie sets of this year. But let's waste no more time and get on to the number two spot. My second favorite LEGO set of 2017 is set 70627, The Dragon's Forge. So, I will say without a doubt that this is my overall favorite Ninjago set of this year. This set has pretty much everything that I could ask for in a Ninjago set. It has a well-designed structure, it has a dragon, a two-headed dragon even, and it also has a good selection of minifigures. My favorite part about this set, though, is definitely the blacksmith. I think the blacksmith shop or this building or whatever, I think it's built amazingly. That's not a word, but I'm going to use that anyways. Uh, the detail on it is just really nice. I really do like how they use the white wall bricks. I think that works really well. And then they put a couple lanterns everywhere on the sides, which is pretty, I really do like. And then the giant circle windows is also pretty cool. Uh, and then also just like the actual, just a bunch of the little details inside, such as like the, uh, the stone uh, sharpener or whatever, then there's also just the little tea table or whatever where you can pour tea, uh, and there's a refrigerator in there. It doesn't exactly make too much sense, but that's pretty cool as well. And then of course, uh, well, I think one of the play features also is that you can create your own little minifigure weapons, which I think was a really good idea, and I'm that's a, I think that is a smart uh, play feature that they were able to do. The minifigure selection in the set is also pretty neat, I'll say. You get Kai and Nia's parents, which are exclusive to this set. Um, you also get a couple of Vermilion Warriors, which are pretty nice to have for army building. And then you also get Kai and Nia with uh, their own exclusive face prints, which are double-sided. Unfortunately, though, they're not going to be really useful because with the whole Season 8 thing with the movie designs and just the time, just time stuff, it's just, you're not going to be able to use it because the new ninja designs are based off of the movie designs, which is a bit unfortunate, so those are kind of, those those face prints will kind of be useless uh, for Ninjago characters, or for the main Ninjago ninja characters, but you can still use them for other cool minifigures if you want. As for the dragon, I like the concept of uh, two elements coming together to form a multi-element elemental dragon however i feel like this uh fusion dragon wasn't pulled off very good compared to other single element elemental dragons i feel like the wings on this one were a bit chunky and just i feel like overall the dragon is a little bit chunky and blocky especially for the wings uh but i think given time they can make some pretty excellent stuff uh for the fusion dragons. So overall, I think this is just a beautifully designed set, and that's the reason why this set is my second favorite LEGO set of 2017.
Before I reveal what my favorite set of 2017 is, I'd like to give an honorable mention to two sets, those being 75532, Scout Trooper and Speeder Bike, in set 21135, the Crafting Box 2.0. Now, the reason the speeder bike set isn't on the list is mainly because it was too late. Uh, you see, I got this set around, like, just one day before New Year's Eve, and I, are bef I already started making and scripting, well not scripting, but I already made the list for this video, and pretty much already started work on, working on it before I even got this set, before I even planned to get it. I didn't even plan to get it, uh, this year at all. I was planning to wait for it to go on sale, and I was checking out Target the, uh, uh, the day before New Year's Eve, and it just happened to be on sale for $43.99 or something like that at, uh, a Target store, and I thought, uh, I might as well pick it up. I never know, never know if it's gonna ever go on sale again, or if it, if the price will increase again, so I thought I might as well pick it up, and I really do enjoy, did enjoy it. I enjoyed the building experience, uh, uh, the actual just results. Now, I'm not gonna really say any more because I haven't actually, uh, shown, said that I've gotten this in any other video. I'm gonna put it, throw it in with the haul video, hopefully, if I if I do a haul video, hopefully when I get the LEGO Minecraft 2018 sets, I'll probably throw it in with that, along with the Praetorian Guard that I did get. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't want to spoil too much, because, uh, yeah, but uh, <laughs> that's the main reason this set didn't make it onto the list, is because it was too late, so I felt it at least deserved an honorable an honorable mention. As for why the Crafting Box 2.0 isn't on this list is a bit more complicated. Now, when I first heard about the release of this set, I was super excited because the previous Crafting Box, the original Crafting Box set from the first wave of LEGO Minecraft sets, was uh, one of my favorite LEGO Minecraft sets ever, and I was hoping this second version would bring the same joy that I had from the original. Even though the builds in the Crafting Box 2.0 were a whole lot better than the ones in the original Crafting Box set, I did not get the same joy out of it that I got from the original crafting box. So comparing it to the original crafting box, I honestly think I like the original one a lot better because I feel the, a lot of the builds in the original crafting box weren't that good and that's and so that inspired me and uh, to create uh, creations of my own whereas the models in this uh, new set are really well built and I don't want to take them apart to build my own stuff because I feel the builds in this set are already good enough and I feel like that's something because the old that's something I felt the old original crafting box felt like it just felt like it was just a pile of bricks whereas this one it's more I guess ordered and organized and the builds in this one like I said are a lot better um, and that in that really encouraged me encourages me a lot more not to tear them apart and build new stuff and that was what that was one of the things that gave me joy with the original crafting box because I didn't like the models a whole lot in that set so it inspired me to create my own and I believe that's probably the reason why I like this set uh well the original crafting box uh, more than this newer one so mainly because of my feelings for these crafting box sets and for this new one I feel like it at least deserved an honorable mention but but that's pretty much it for honorable mentions, so I think it's about time that I finally reveal my favorite set of 2017. And my favorite LEGO set of 2017 is set 21137, the LEGO Minecraft Mountain Cave. Okay, so I don't even know where to begin where to start with this set because there is so much that you can do and pretty much everything about this set I don't dislike. I pretty much like everything about it. I feel like they did it perfectly. If they were to take out a chunk of Minecraft terrain and make it into a set, I think this is how it would look like. There is just so much good stuff in this set. Like the minifigures, I believe you get 13 minifigures and some of them are exclusive or are come in very little sets. Uh, the giant slime, that is an exclusive uh, figure, I guess. Not exactly a minifigure, but it is a mob. It's exclusive to this set so far. Also the charged creeper, that is an exclusive mob as well. Um, there's also the hostile wolf and hostile baby wolf. Those are neat to get. And then there's some other things that are also pretty nice to get, or other mobs that are nice to get that haven't... Oh, well, also, I forgot about the bats, but uh, also... Um, 
There's also the Cave Spider, which previously only came in the End Portal set, so it's nice to get one of those in another set. But in just there's a lot of minifigures in this set, and there's a lot of play features in this, in this set. Probably my favorite play feature, without a doubt, is the minecart elevator play feature. I really just love playing around with that. And then once I get the minecart to the top, I just love also make, making the minecart roll down the side of the hill. And that works quite well. And unfortunately, one thing I'll, I want to, I'm just going to spoil this right now. Um, there's a, uh, at one of the parts of the track, there is a three-way uh, rail, and if they had made that just a regular curved two-way rail, uh, it, the minecart would have been able to go all the way down the mountain and slightly into the cave on its own, which is probably, that's probably my one only problem with the set, but that is, it's just like, it's finding a needle in a haystack, I guess, but uh, I really just I think the minecart function works really well. Now, I can go on and on about this set, but I'm going to save it for the review, which I have not even started yet. I'm not even sure how I'm going to do the review since this set is so big. It won't fit in my little white box, I guess. But uh, like I said, not going to really uh, say too much else. It's it's a fantastic set. It's definitely impressive for one of my first uh, direct consumer sets I've ever gotten. And I hope it won't be the last. Hopefully we'll get more Minecraft Direct Consumer sets in the future. I'm hoping not this year because I feel like we've been getting uh, too many of those recently. I would like to have at least two full waves of sets come out this year. Uh, but uh, all, we, I, all we can do is really just wait and see what happens. So if you're a fan of LEGO Minecraft or maybe even just Minecraft in general, I think this is a great display piece and if you ever have the t if you have the time to build it and the money to actually buy it, I would definitely recommend uh, getting it if you're willing to pay uh, $250 for it. Uh, it's probably not going to go on sale. I don't know if direct consumer sets ever go on sale, but uh, overall just a fantastic sets a fantastic set so if you ever get the chance to the chance to get it I would recommend it and that concludes my top 10 Lego sets of 2017 in my latest update video I said that this video would be the first upload of 2018 and I'm sorry it didn't this was just such a long video to make and so far I hope hopefully this all this effort pays off because this is I'm gonna say so far I've looked at it and I think this is probably one of my best top 10 videos so I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always feel free to disagree with me and post your own top 10 favorite Lego sets of 2017 down in the comments below. But I think that pretty much wraps up this top 10 so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and keep building!